One of the biggest mistakes people make when they start grading in Resolve is that they think Resolve is 32-bit float, meaning that you can put your nodes wherever you want and everything is going to be kosher. I'm going to prove it to you that that is not the case at all. There is a right or wrong way. I've mentioned it many times before, but people still have tons and tons of questions, so I had to make this video. But here, I'm going to take you through and we're really going to learn the how to break it down and what is happening when this happens and then what should we do so we're gonna see all of that and before we jump in please do me a favor smash the like button subscribe to the channel hit the bell icon so you can be notified about our future content let's jump in what i want to show you first of all is on a grayscale what it means to grade over or under the lut so here's our codex 2383 from resolve zones film looks so if i right click here and go to reveal selected LUT, it tells you which one I'm using. So this is basically the neutral uh, color temperature Rexona 9 Kodak 2383. Okay, so that's what's what we got going on here. And if you look at the curve, it applies like a really nice S curve, right? So that's what it looks like right now. And that's what's going on. So usually what people would do is that they would apply the LUT on their footage and then they would create a node after, which is basically grading over the LUT. And then here, what they would do is like, whatever you wanna do, right? Like if you wanna have like a kind of a strong uh, shadows, right? And just like a punchy blacks. So you would do something like that. And if you just look at the picture, it doesn't look bad, right? Like it's actually working. But if you look at the scope, something very terrible is happening. Look what's going on. So if I do before and after, Look how this information is just being cut off. Like the blacks are completely gone. This information is destroyed, okay? And there is no roll offs on the bottom end. Same thing with highlights. If you wanna just kinda have like a more aggressive contrast, you would take your gain and you would raise it up and just look at what's going on on your top end. That information is being clipped. It's completely gone. So that's what happens when you grade over the LUT. If I were to hit E, to detach this node, now I just detach this node, and if I go ahead and put it right before this LUT, look at what's going to happen. Boom. Just look at the scopes. If I do before this, and then if I do after, just look at what happens to our scopes. So now we still keep that aggressive contrast that we wanted to add, but we're not clipping anything on the bottom or the top end because it's being protected by the actual curve of the LUT, the contrast curve that it's creating, okay? And that's why I always tell you guys how important it is to understand and respect the node tree. A lot of people say, well, Kazi isn't Resolve 32-bit float, which means I can put anything anywhere. That's just not true, okay? The sequence matters very much. Where you place the specific nodes and the changes that you make down the entire color grading workflow. If you're liking what you're seeing so far and you want to jump into the world of color grading a little bit more, I got two different things for you. One, you can check out my free training where you're going to learn how to get perfect skin tones, how to better shot match, gamma shift issues, and tons of other stuff. And you will get freebies like LUTs, power grades, things like that by me. I also have a masterclass that you can join. We have over 6,000 students. You get 300 plus on-demand lessons, discounts on your favorite third-party plugins. Above all, we do weekly competitions where you get tailor-made feedback and there is no end date on that that is an ongoing thing and to top it all off it all comes with 30 day money back guarantee links to all of that are in the description below let's get back to the video now let's move on to an actual example so here we have a shot filmed on Ari Amira and all I did is just a simple conversion so we're basically taking Ari Alexa footage or Amira footage and converting it to Rex 709 and then Cineon film log so we can apply the same LUT, if I do right click and reveal selected LUT, it's the same exact LUT that I'm applying that is available in Resolve Studio and if I'm not mistaken with the free version as well. So that's all we're doing here. If we go through a workflow where you would apply a node right after your LUT, then we're gonna go here and we'll be like, okay, let's let's balance this image out, right? Like if I look at my vector scope, everything is looking way too yellow. So what do we have to do? We can go in our offset and we can go all the way back and pull that yellow out. That just doesn't seem right, right? Like what is really going on? Why is this happening instead of just getting a well-balanced image? Somebody can go, well, because it was shot like that, so now the color information is baked in. 
Maybe it's true, maybe not. So let's try the same technique. Let's detach this and now work under the LUT. So let me bring this in right here. And all of a sudden we get a completely different result. So just look at what's going on here. Okay. So when we had this LUT applied right here, it looked like this. When we applied it prior or under our LUT, it looked like that. So now let's reset it and do the same exact thing. I'm just going to go under my offset and I'm just looking at my vector scope and I'm just trying to bring everything in the middle. Okay without overdoing it. So uh, even if I park it, even something like this, right? Like if I park it somewhere around here, if I do before and after, or like if I want to push it a little bit more and even it out. So if I just even take it down here and if I do before and after, just look at the results, right? So like if we were to save this version and then detach this node and put it over the LUT, look at this result compared to this result. We haven't made any changes to that node. We just changed the order of it and the results are 1000% different, okay? Before we thought that it couldn't be achieved because the look was baked in, this warm look was baked in, we couldn't do anything about it. And boom, just by changing the sequence, we ended up with this. Now let's do something else. Let's create a node over our LUT and uh, now let's do like a little push and pull, right? So like maybe I want my blacks to be a little bit more pushed. So I bring it down. So, okay, this is looking kind of nice. And then I want to kind of just like raise my highlights, something like that, right? Like just give our image a little bit of a punch. Well, look at the highlights. They're being clipped and look at the shadows. They're being clipped just like what we noticed with our grayscale image. And again, if I just hit E and detach that and bring it before my LUT was applied. And now if I do before and after, look at what's going on. Just check out the scopes. So let's copy this and go to our other version. And uh, once again, let's move everything over here, create a new node, and now I'm gonna paste that change. So that was just my lift and gain change, right? To give it a more uh, punchy look. And if I go back and forth between the two, look at how much of a difference it makes where you place your node. So th this is everything graded over the LUT. This is everything graded under the LUT. The difference is just, I mean, it's beyond night and day, okay? And that's why, guys, the sequence matters a lot when you're grading. So hopefully this clears things up about like, hey, resolve this 32-bit float, I can put anything anywhere. You saw that clearly that's not the case, especially if you're using LUTs. On that note, guys, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.